Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm from Mazak Machine Tool down in Florence, Kentucky. Um, I'm the manufacturing manager there, so I'm going to be going through some of the things and some of the steps we've taken on building our iSmart factory there at that Florence location. Um, just a, a little bit of background, Mazak Manufacturing, we've been manufacturing machine tools in Florence now for 40 years. We celebrated that anniversary in 2014. Um, talking about diversification, we manufacture 114 different models out of this facility. So a big, a big change that we had to think about when we were restructuring the factory and the parts flow through the factory and how we got some of these systems online to be able to make quick changeovers and some of those things. Um, with the latest expansion, we are targeting 200 machines a month that we can build for North American operations as well as exports to other countries. Um, we are ISO certified. We've been ISO certified since 2002. So a lot of things continuous improvement wise that we do to make sure we have the best product available that we offer to our customers. Um, currently, we added a, approximately 100,000 more square feet on the manufacturing side. I'll go into that in a little bit detail. A uh, total of $30 million invested with about 19 million in capital investments. Uh, just an overview, an aerial of air uh, manufacturing layout, air north building is what I'll be focusing on primarily today, uh, but we also have our south support center uh, with the latest ASRS automatic storage and retrieval system, as well as an expansion on our national technology center, uh, a warehouse facility, as well as a spindle facility up the street from that. Uh, so what you see here is the north building um, plant layout. Typically, we added a manufacturing bay to move some stuff around, make air parts delivery much better, going to 200 units a month. We wanted to have better flow through the facility. So the expansion area is in pink at the top. And then the new equipment that we've added in the last year and a half is in red. We relocated a lot of the equipment in the facility as well to give us better flow throughout. And then everything that is remaining is current. So when we were, we were sitting down and we were brainstorming on what we wanted to achieve, we were also thinking about how we were going to connect our machines throughout. So we were talking about MT Connect. We had sampled MT Connect in the facility and, and made some great strides with it. And when we, when we talked about the flow of parts and, and how these machines are going to be tracked, MT Connect was right at the top of the list. So we are using MT Connect on all the equipment in our facility. Um, and as you know, MT Connect is a royalty-free um, software, so anybody that wants that can get it, and you have to use that through an agent, and then your machines become compliant to that, whether it's a software adapter or a hardware adapter. So as of this day, all Mazak equipment that's manufactured at this facility is MT compliant. So there's nothing that is needed additionally to bring these machines online and make sure that they can talk the MT Connect language. So once that's established, um, it's very simple to set up a software to start pulling NC signals out of the machine and be able to transmit that to a software and start doing analytics on that. Okay. So when we originally were looking at the MT Connect platform and we were wanting to really see what we were, what was going on in our plant floor, we wanted to see what was uh, uh, very simplistic stop and air machines, why the machines weren't running. And as I said, we, we knew the MT Connect was there. We wanted to try to bring somebody on board with us that was familiar with MT Connect that had some things to offer as a partnership. So we actually sat down and asked six different manufacturers to come into the facility and showcase what they are doing with the MT Connect platform. So we ask managers, supervisors, lead men, our IT department all to sit down with them and ask questions on what we wanted to get out of this and what they provided. Um, after a couple of months of evaluation, we settled on Memex um, for a couple of reasons. They were very instrumental in the MT Connect as far as from the start. Um, they had some very good adapters that were already readily available. They had very good security options uh, with the cloud and with SQL servers, et cetera, so where you can kind of have some of that. So once that signal was made, or once we made that choice to have Mimex on board, uh, it was very easy transition for them to set up MT Connect and be able to start looking at the signals that was being generated from the machine. So 
obviously uh, the MT Connect takes these signals and then uses them and you can do reporting and whatnot on that. So we wanted something where we could look at our downtime, very simply report that downtime and start making changes to that. So just uh, an overall layout of the plan again, um, in this area here at the top is where we actually set up our test cells. And we had a, a, an infrastructure there where we had ethernet connections and whatnot. So we, we upgraded some of that to fiber optic cable, set up the system, started running these systems, started evaluating the system, started testing adapters. Uh, we started testing interfaces. We started doing training, getting everybody on board with that. And as you can see, there's several different machine cells here uh, from standalone machines to full automatic machines. So we had a little bit of both. So we could really see how the automatic machines done versus the, I wouldn't say manual machines, but more labor intensive machines. So the OEE, overall equipment efficiency, that is what the goal of monitoring this equipment is going to achieve. Um, there are a couple things that goes into that availability, quality, performance, and downtime all factor into your true OEE. So when we first set this up, um, Mimix has a few things that they talk about and they talk about crawl, walk, run. So we didn't want to put this system in and overwhelm everybody that's gonna be using it and it not be any good. So we decided to take that approach, crawl, walk, run. So we really wanted to look at what's stopping the machine so the utilization of the machine become important. So the scheduled time versus how much that time runs. So that was our primary focus in the first stages of this. Um, dashboard screens, we wanted something very simple for the operators, for managers, for lead men to be able to view and to look at. Um, all the pertinent information is displayed very easily in these dashboards. Um, it, it is listing out OEE, but as I said, we're looking at utilization in the, in the startup of this. Uh, different lists of machines can be displayed for whatever the operator wants to look at, whatever the manager wants to look at, et cetera. And once we get into that, if you want to look at different specifics, it's very easy for that to be viewed on that same screen. It's just a mouse click away to be able to see shift details, start finish times, uh, down times, et cetera. So with that being said, we also wanted to get our operators in on this level as well. You don't want to start monitoring and doing things and making changes. Um, so we actually added 60 inch monitors on the floor for the operators to be able to see what was going on. So they seen the data, they were aware of the data, they can see how their actions impact that utilization of that machine or that cell. Um, so ultimately it, it increased the awareness of the operators to where if they're running a cell, they can see and react to that much quicker. So currently, uh, MT Connect signals obviously are pretty straightforward. The NC generates a certain amount of signals that MT Connect can pick up. Um, pretty straightforward in cycle feed hold across the grinders, et cetera. Manual grinders, you have an in cycle mode. And one of the things that we started seeing was when we started looking at the data, there was several things that started popping up a prevalent across all these machines was the MO program stops. Um, feed hold and idle times. That was what was most used. So our action plans kind of worked around that early on to be able to put things in place to try to minimize those things because again, that's what's stopping air machines. So idle time reductions, I mentioned the floor monitors. The more aware that your operators are, they can react and it, it, they get a better sense of time management on running machines and getting things done. And tooling, that was another thing that um, when you talk about a large facility such as Ayers, we have a couple different locations where we store tools, but sometimes they may not have been enough tooling there. So when an operator's pulled away from that machine cell, obviously machines will sit, et cetera, things don't get done. So uh, we added more tooling, put some things in place there, um, and some of the automated systems as well. When you're running Palatex, that'll run unmanned for eight hours, very difficult for one operator to get that system reloaded, get things turned around and back in cycle. So shifting some manpower around, we've seen some of those things. And obviously um, casting variances that we've seen from vendor to vendor, obviously change some programming and, and add some programs to be able to accommodate that much easier. So feed hold, obviously um, it's no secret that our workforces are, are getting a little bit older um, and the new generation sometimes the training may not be adequate enough. 
But uh, simple things such as when, you, when you're servicing tools in a machine tool, if you're familiar with that, um, there's things that you can do to keep that machine tool running versus stopping that machine and it being uh, sitting there, per se. Uh, program stops, obviously going through the programs, uh, looking at the castings, looking at how we process that or adding another program helped. And with the visualization of the monitors and, and supervisors looking at this information, when there was an issue, we could have maintenance respond much quicker than before. So this is um, some of the reporting that come out of that when we were first looking at some of the utilization across the lines, and that's across three shifts. This is on our large frame line. And there's a lot of inconsistency there um, for various reasons, MOs, program stops, et cetera. So after two months of looking at the data and making some minor changes, uh, much better utilization across all the shifts. Um, and by just looking at what we call the low-lying fruit, things that you can identify very quickly and make very simple changes to, a 6.2% improvement in utilization across this machine line. And when we look at overall, we've been monitoring this now uh, since November, so good results coming up into good utilization numbers. And then 2015's a, a little bit slower year still. The trend is coming up, um, but nonetheless, it's a very valuable tool when you want to look at utilization and downtime tracking and things of that, et cetera. So the benefits, obviously, the benefits um, are pretty significant real-time data when you're looking at real-time data you can make um, reactions much quicker you can analyze that data we, we've seen a 17 percent overall improvement very quickly by looking at that low-lying fruit that we had there across 15 different machines so that gave us the ability to bring in parts um, reduce some overtime etc and it cre increased uh, operator utilization obviously by the visualization of seeing some of those things out there and also knowing that this was a test, we were going to be adding um, 60 or so more machines approximately. So we wanted that flexibility of adding that equipment very easily and very available. So with that being said, obviously we have a fabrication area, <clears throat> fabrication area where we're running CNC lasers and some press brakes as well. So we thought if we can make those kind of gains on our machining side, why can't we do it across the board? So some of the different things that we look at on our lasers are shutter open, waiting to be loaded e-stops, et cetera, the press brakes in cycle, um, e-stops, alarms, et cetera. And again, um, in the corner, that's where we first started our testing. Um, very successful. It's progressed out to all the machining. We've now looking at our fabrication area for the powder paint, um, the press brakes, et cetera, our headstock, sands, our headstock stands in assembly also. We're doing some monitoring that has evolved into some different things that I'll share with you as well. Um, the lasers, obviously, you can see the utilization on those by doing some of the same principles that we talked about in the machining side, putting things in place and starting to look at that process and what stops the machines, um, minimizing optional parts. That was something that our fab manager had decided to move these to an offline laser. Her utilization started coming up um, right along the press brake line as well. Uh, a very manual operation when we're talking press brakes and doing some, some simple things, getting some things prepped and putting some stuff out there to help bring that utilization up. And again, the same type dashboards that we have on the manufacturing side was very easily to get up and running in all the other areas. And once the training's done, it's very simple to follow up on that. Uh, just an overview of some of the monitors and whatnot, some of the different functions throughout the facility that we're currently using. So when you go so far with that, uh, we talked about the crawl, walk, run. At some point, you have to start walking. And the NC can, can generate certain signals, and you have certain signals that you can look at. And once you get to that, you get that low-lying fruit out of the way. You have to start reaching a little bit higher, start getting some of those things that are a little bit harder process to nail down and figure out. So we decided that we needed something additional to that. So we introduced a operator portal. Um, we call them MOPs for short, Merlin operator portals. And this is, an, is a, a box that's on the floor. So when an event happens and a machine has a, um, a stoppage, whether it be an idle time or whatever, the operator now can go to that box very simply um, on a touch screen and 
dial in what is exactly going on on that machine. So that allows managers, supervisors to look at an event, whether it be an idle event, um, whether it be scheduled maintenance, whether it be a test cutting, programming, et cetera, to be able to start isolating that and put things in place to be able to reduce some of those. And just uh, this is what these operator portals look like. Um, as I said, they're touch screens, very simple, very easy to use. And we strategically located them throughout the facility. So they're very close to our 60 inch monitors where it's very visible. So the operators can get into those very easily and type in any of these codes that are listed up there. And this is just an example um, on that same V100 line. Now we're looking at different codes. So maintenance scheduled, setup, cleaning. Some of those codes are more defined now versus being put into just an idle category. We can actually start looking at that down reason and start attacking that and start putting things in place to reduce some of that idle time. And here is just a, uh, an example of one of those, um, a 60 inch monitor in our lathe area. Uh, this is a very highly automated area and um, we've got an event monitor running so the operators can keep track of what's going on, what's scheduled on the machines, very easily react to that if there's changes and show some different things. The operator portal right below it where they can interact with that. Um, the next phase of this when we're gonna be into the running phase is adding the Microsoft Dynamics AX where we actually have the scheduler in, involved. So that schedule will be created. Uh, production con control can download that directly into these boxes and then we can actually start tracking true OEE because we have all four of those parameters to be able to do that. And just an overview of some of the, the locations where the monitors are at. Uh, six, we have six of the 60 inch that are located throughout the manufacturing. We have uh, six of the 32 inch HMIs that are out there as well. So a lot of different areas where we can monitor what's going on and where the operators can have an input point to kind of define more so what's going on if there is an event that stops a machine. And this is our new powder paint system as well. Two 60 inch monitors, two uh, 32 inch monitors as well for the press brakes and the lasers and the new powder paint line. So with the iSmart factory, we wanted, we wanted to go a little bit further as far as having some, some things in place to be able to do other than just machine monitoring and whatnot. So on the maintenance side of things for our new powder coat system, uh, coolant levels, chemical wash, powder levels, water levels, things like that. We're monitoring and starting to track those different things. Um, throughout the entire facility, an operator can go up to one of these 60 inch monitors and, and use the portal to call up um, blueprints, things like that. So following with our ISO, you have to have documentation control. We do that now electronically through this. So it gives us that opportunity to do that as well as um, OSHA testing, we can add sensor packs, we can add all different sorts of things, sound level testing throughout the facility to where that stuff can be tracked. It can be automatically recorded through the MT Connect platform and dashboards be set up so we can provide that information very easily. And just an example here um, of some of the different monitoring functions on the 60 inch screens, very visual, the first machine status, it's, uh, it's up. so as these lines stretch out sometimes because of the nature of the machines, they're very large. Some of the machines are bigger than this room we're in actually. So you have several of those in a machine line, very difficult to see. This is a quick reference to show what that machine's doing. So that operator can react much quicker. Um, again, some setup information and details on blueprints and et cetera. We do publish that stuff out there for the operators to be able to see. And this is a dashboard of our new powder paint system. Uh, just, uh, it's a demonstration of showing the flow of the workflow. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things going on here. Using MT Connect, we're monitoring the systems, monitoring levels, heat in the ovens, um, line speed, things like that, etc. So the paint line come online and we thought, well, we want to see how efficient we are, how we're utilizing this system. So in the four months that we've been tracking, we've seen about an eight and a half percent increase. So it's very valuable information when you can look at what's going on and be able to react to that and make things move in the direction that you want them to do. Again, this is uh, in our welding areas, taking that same thing that we practice on the machining side, um, 
putting a monitor down there where the operators have access to that, to blueprints and to what needs to be done. Obviously, it, um, it eliminates a lot of the mistakes by having a, a correct drawing. Um, the operators can go to that as a reference point if they need to look at something. Sometimes their drawings are a little hard to understand. They can go to this, they can blow it up in a 3D model and see exactly what that looks like. So that does help quite a bit. And we're getting ready to add, this was the first prototype that we tested in our fab shop. So we've got 35 booths. Uh, most likely we'll be putting 35 of these in because they are very valuable tools. And as well as I mentioned, our spindle test area. This is where things kind of started getting interesting. We we manufacture all of our headstocks and spindles in-house, and we do all kinds of testing and, and whatnot for those break-in cycles, and et cetera. So we wanted to use the MT platform to be able to start monitoring that. So we are monitoring eight test cells on all the headstocks and spindles. So that gives you the RPM, um, front and rear differences on heat, temperature, any kind of vibration, then we can output that in a simple report that goes with our spindles. Um, if there's ever an issue, then it's very simple to go back and look at that. And um, with this technology, we got to thinking as far as on the machines, the actual machines that we're running, we can do that same type of logic back there. That's where we kind of got into the iSmart box. And what it does, obviously, it connects any type of machine center um, through this box, any third party, any legacy machine where you can start looking at some of those things through sensors and using the MT Connect platform to be able to do that with. Um, and it doesn't really matter what type of controls, um, they're compatible with most controls out there. So some of the benefits and features of this smart box is it's a box that we manufacture. It's got a couple different um, switches inside of it depending on what you're wanting to do. The main player is this Cisco switch. It um, allows a lot of flexibility, a lot of capability as far as looking at different sensors, um, looking at different types of machines, legacy machines. Uh, the Cisco switch is actually a, a small PC. Um, we talk about security. We talk about things of that nature. A lot of customers come in and want this and, well, how am I going to manage it? How's it going to be secure for, for my operation? Most all that security is done right there on the switch itself. So anything behind the switch, whether it be a machine or cells or test stands, is completely isolated from that. Um, scalability, it has that security you can collect data from different types of sensors using the moxa switch if you have a legacy machine then you add a uh, memex board which makes that compatible where you can start getting mt connect information right out of it and what we've come to find out is to integrate the mt connect platform you can actually run the mt connect from this switch so it's a pretty self-contained pretty powerful unit And we are currently, we, we set these up in November for our uh, Discover event. Uh, we've got five boxes on the floor currently. Um, four of those are on a Mazak product, and one is a legacy machine with a FANIC controller. So a lot of capability. And when we were, we were starting to look at this, coolant level, pH, ambient temperature, vibration, we're starting to record that data, starting to publish that data on a on a monitor, a 60 inch monitor, just to kind of show some of those things, another visual aspect of that. And obviously the, we have an operator running this cell and very good information when you see coolant level low, pH is off, some things like that. You can react to that pretty quickly. So an alarm will pop up if one of those are out of sync or whatnot. So we talk about security. Um, again, I mentioned that you can connect these to a network. Anything behind the switch becomes a, uh, a secure device, no matter what that is, if it's a sensor or what have you. And with this switch, there's a lot of things that are built into it that are standard. Um, you can see some of these dashboards that we're using throughout the factory can be run off of this switch. So you can look at um, machines in cycle, out of cycle, alarm history, some different parameters of that machine transmit that back and forth to the network, do reporting on that, all from the switch. And sensors, as I mentioned, um, just about any type of sensor, for whatever reason you want to run, is available. Um, depending on what type, you just plug it in, do some configuration, and then you can start reporting that data and start sending that to a database. And the great thing about this switch is I've heard that a lot on the edge. Um, this is just air first 
sampling of, of crunching the data on the edge where a lot of this information is coming to this switch and it has the capability to start looking at that data and sending out just a report to a database or to a PC. You're not having to send that big data across the network. So uh, some good benefits to that. And again, everything behind the switch is, you know, sitting right there nice and pretty and nobody sees that. It's, uh, it's all done at the switch. So some very good things. And we've also added um, another aspect of that, web cameras and things like that. So in our powder paint system, we're running uh, two web cameras where we can look at different things, line speed, we can look at the booth itself to make sure that's operational. Any kind of sensor package that you want to add, very easily added, very easily configured uh, PA systems, things of that nature can be run through this switch as well. So the current configuration, uh, we're running vibration coolant coolant level ambient air on five machines. The future of this obviously is from our spindle testing is when we integrate that into a machine tool, not looking at the vibration on the machine, but looking at the vibration on that spindle. Start doing some analytics on a new machine and say this is the parameters that that spindle runs at. And as that machine starts to get older and starts to wear or you have a crash or different parameters, then some of that information can be downloaded <clears throat> and sent back and compared so you can do some predictive health on machine tools and et cetera. This is where the next progression in the three months we've had these boxes up and running is what we're going to. Uh, we're getting ready to move this into that same area that I'd spoke of on the automated area. Those are all robot cells and, and being able to use that type of technology on these type of machines to be able to do that kind of, kind of work on. And it will eventually progress into the entire factory. Great thing about this also, uh, that switch, I failed to mention that uh, we're running them on one per machine. You can actually break that switch down to run multiple machines off that switch. So you're not, uh, you're not uh, having to buy a switch for each machine. You can break that down into multiples as well. And an overview of uh, the whole entire factory, all the machining and grinding areas, uh, every machine on our floor is now MT compliant. Um, even the legacy equipment we're monitoring through the MT Connect platform, as well as the powder paint system, um, the laser press break operation, and the assembly test stands, all being monitored with the MT Connect platform, uh, visual through 60-inch monitors on the floor. Thanks.